Glory to God. Glory to God. Welcome to Faith Clinic. Wow. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lepe Kuzo Vriz Kapanash. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you tonight to Faith Clinic. Thank you. Thank you, please. Wherever you're connected, please share this video. Let them know that Faith Clinic has begun tonight. Glory to Jesus. Mande pe kuzoli, bave juta, gepe ro brasi farande. Share this video. Share this video. Invite your loved ones. And um, tonight promises to be great. Thank God for tonight. Jesus is Lord. The siege is over. The snare is broken. Our soul is escaped like a bed out of the snare. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to the teeth of our enemies. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Somebody celebrate him. Just give him praise. The Bible says that it is by the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. Glory to Jesus. Welcome to Faith Clinic. And this happens to be a very interesting season. The season that we are celebrating the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the core of our Christian faith. Thank you for joining Ruth David. Please let us know. I, I need the feedback. How is the sound? Please let me know how is the video. Um, we thank God because we know that God is in control tonight. Glory to Jesus. Just confirm the video, the sound, and give us a feedback. Please, if you're just connecting, our tradition is that we share, invite, just share on your statuses, share on your platforms, call your loved ones, tell them that Faith Clinic is here, and encourage them to join Faith Clinic. Tonight promises to be awesome. Glory to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Rollins, our Jimeria. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you, Joel Egele. Thank you, Ruth, for your feedback. Sound and audio, good. Thank you. Video and sound, good. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Please connect, invite your loved ones. We are going to start right away without wasting time. But just invite your loved ones, share, remind them, repost on your status, tell them that we are we are about to start. Tell them that fake clinic is up. Video and sound, perfect. I love that. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. to Brasia. I want to assure you that tonight, God is going to put something in your hands that will leave you a permanent victor, a permanent winner. God is going to empower you. You know, we plead the blood of Jesus. We know about the blood of Jesus, but God wants to give you a different revelation of the blood of Jesus and how to apply it in your life. Thank you for joining Reverend Joe Princewell. Thank you for your feedback. I want to welcome our viewers on TikTok. I want to welcome you. Please share this video on your statuses. I want to welcome viewers on YouTube, viewers on Instagram, viewers on X, and viewers on Facebook. Please share this video. Invite your friends and invite your loved ones. Get your seatbelt, get your virus. The Lord wants to impact something with you, leave something with you that you will use for life, for yourself, and it will also be a blessing to others. The Lord wants to empower, empower you with the knowledge that will transform your spiritual warfare, that will transform your life in its entirety. I believe that strongly. And that is what God wants to do. I'm so excited about tonight. I've had that conviction strong in my spirit as we're waiting on the Lord and I'm seeking his face for tonight's meeting. Thank you for joining. I want to say a big welcome to you. If this is your first time joining Faith Clinic, Faith Clinic is a program that the Lord has designed to bring about healing, deliverance, revival, and restoration to God's people through the teaching of his word, prophetic declaration, and demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. And um, if you want a touch from God, this is the right place to be. We come, we, we seek the face of God every Wednesday on this platform. I want to welcome you. Thank you, Fortune Nelson. Thank you, Taribo Oesendo. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Sidolite. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you. Thank you, viewers across the platform from joining. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Thank you. We're going to start right away. Let's bow our hearts in prayers as we seek the Lord. 
Father, we ask that you bless this moment, O oh God. Even as we look into the scriptures, let our eyes be open and let Jesus be glorified. Servo no gibalas. Let your Holy Spirit move without restriction. Let Jesus be glorified. This is our prayer today. You will do it. We trust you. Let your word bring healing. Let your word bring deliverance. Let your word bring impartation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. When the Lord wants to bless a man, the Lord puts the man where he will hear his word. Because the word of God carries the power of God. As a matter of fact, the word of God is God. We are told in John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So when you listen to the word of God, you are receiving God into your spirit. I was also told in Romans chapter, Romans chapter 10 verse 17, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as you receive God's word, you're receiving God. As you receive God's word, you're receiving faith. Your heart is being lifted. We're also told in Psalms that he sent forth his word and it healed them of their diseases and delivered them from their destruction. In the word of God is embedded healing, is embedded deliverance. So I'm trusting the Lord that the Lord is going to transform your life. The Lord is going to impact you in a special way. We have for a topic this season, particularly for today, victory through the blood of Jesus. The power of the blood of Jesus provides everything needed Everything needed for our victory, everything needed for our triumph, everything needed for our success, including redemption, fellowship with God, healing, protection, and authority over the devil and his schemes. Our understanding of this power should go beyond hymns. You know, most of us know about the blood of Jesus in hymns. When we come and sing hymns, some of us will only know about the blood of Jesus during Easter period or when we are having Holy Communion in church. Our knowledge should be deep. Our knowledge should be, should, should, should be, should be, should be, I don't know the right word to use because the way spiritual warfare applies and the principle of the kingdom, you rule by knowledge. The Bible says you shall know the truth the truth shall make you free. Knowledge is power. Daniel 11.32 says that those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. When you have an understanding of the blood of Jesus, you begin to see a different manifestation in your life. I remember years back, as a growing teenager, a lady, an old lady, in one of our churches in the semi-urban areas, she was, she, she was an illiterate, and a grandmother. She came to share the testimony and I will never forget that testimony. What was her testimony? She had her grandchildren dying, this reoccurring death, her grandchildren dying. So she said the day she walked into our, a branch of my church, I'm a member of Greater Evangelism World Crusade in Nigeria. As she walked into a branch of our church, she went there and she heard when we were praying, People were shouting the blood, we are pleading the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. That was the only thing she could hear because she wasn't understanding English. So the only thing she, she got from that meeting was the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And she said because of these incessant deaths around her family, that she has gone to several places. She has gone to these marine houses, marines to consult marine spirits. She has gone to white garment churches, consult spirits. But that trend was not stopping. But she came to church that day. The only thing she heard, when they were, you know, as a culture in my church, during the time of prayer, when we start to pray prayer of warfare, there are some points that have been called. The whole congregation and the brethren will, will reply or will re respond the blood of Jesus. The blood. For example, if I say I take authority against the power of death, the old, the old believers still know that, but these new generation believers don't know because they don't know the value of the blood of Jesus Christ. So this lady, the only thing she got from that meeting was the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. She got home and this death, this spirit of death came to her house to take one of her, grand, her grandchildren. That only thing she had learned in church, she started pleading it, the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And that was how the power of God was manifested. And that hold and grip of death over that child was broken. And eventually, that was how that demonic oppression of death ended in a house. 
the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. It's beyond songs. It's beyond holy communion. It is beyond Easter period. We need to understand the power in the blood of Jesus. That is one blow that the devil has not recovered from. That is one, one knockout that, that Jesus gave the devil and the devil has not recovered. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. And those are the things that we'll be talking about today so that you are empowered. You know how to use the blood of Jesus Christ for spiritual warfare, for intercession, and for your prayers. Glory to Jesus. Ali Kapraf Izo. Holy Spirit, I pray that you make your word easy for your people to understand. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. That the heart of your children be open to receive your word and to understand your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, we need to know the, the potency, the potent power in the blood. The blood of Jesus remain ever living and potent to this day. The Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 12 verse 24, it said the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus Christ is talking. The blood of Jesus carries life. As a matter of fact, on the cross when Jesus was crucified, I think it was Matthew's account, as the blood of Jesus dropped on the earth, the Bible says there was earthquake. The curtain that was separating the holies from holies was rent into two. The blood of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I, I'm just praying that you will grasp this. And as you grasp this, I want to assure you, no devil can stand your way. No devil can, can hold claim whatsoever or, or any as, to hold any aspect of your life in, in, in bondage. You cannot be held in bondage when you understand the power of the blood. And that's what the Lord wants to do tonight. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says in that Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, it said the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Abel's blood was crying for vengeance, but the blood of Jesus was crying for forgiveness, was crying for redemption, was crying for your victory, was crying for impartation, was destroying the powers of darkness. The blood of Jesus Christ speaks better than the blood of Abel. Tonight, Ami Valise, I declare that Jesus' blood is speaking upon you. Every voice, every harassment from the pit of hell against you, against your family, against your consign, against anything that is associated with you, by the blood of Jesus, we command them to be silent. The Bible says that the Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth be silent before him. So if, Jesus, if the blood of Jesus is speaking, sickness, I command you to be silent. Anisha, Fras, your powers are broken in the name of Jesus. We must diligently seek to grasp the dynamic power within the blood of of Jesus Christ and learn how to apply it for our victorious Christian living on a daily basis. We should, we should diligently seek to grasp this dynamic power within the blood and learn how to apply it. Glory to Jesus. And that's the essence of our discussion today. Now, quickly, I just want to point this out that the blood of Jesus Christ gushed out from different parts of the body of Christ. We are even told that in that in Luke's account on the prayer of Jesus, we are told that he prayed to the point just before his death that the sweat on his body they were like drops of blood. But apart from that, we could see seven places, actually five, because two hands, two legs, form four places where the blood of Jesus Christ was shed, was what gushed out. The first place was his head. In Matthew 27, 29 and 30, the Bible said, and when they had plated the crown of thorn, they put it upon his head and they read in his hand. And they bowed, when they were mocking him, they did a plating of, of, of a thorn, a crown from thorn, and they put it on his head. So that was the first piercing. The blood spilled 
from the head of Jesus. Another place where the blood spilled in Matthew chapter 27, verse 26, the same Matthew, he's back. The Bible said, Then release he Barabbas, Matthew 27, 26. Then release he Barabbas and unto them. And when he had when they had when he had scourged him, he delivered him to be crucified. The stripes of Jesus' back was also another place that the, 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 the blood of the, the blood came out. If you watch the passion of Christ, he gives a he gave a graphic def, gra, graphic description of, of, of what Jesus went. You see, that, that scotch they use, that whip they use was not an ordinary whip. It is a whip used by the Roman soldiers. You know, it, it is it is designed in such a way that when you are lashed with that whip, it gets stuck to your flesh. As they are pulling back the whip, your flesh will tear. So that's called that stripe tore the back of Jesus. So he's, he's he shed his blood. I don't want to use the word spill. It is not spill. He shed his blood. His head, his back, his hand. We all know that he was nailed. The 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 the, the psalm is also prophesied about it. We are told in Psalm 26, verse 16, For doors have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they have pierced my hands and my feet. We're talking about Jesus' hand and feet. So you have the two hands, you have the two legs, four places, you have his back, five, and you have his, his uh, head for the for the tongue. Then another place where we see where Jesus shed his blood from is his side. In John 19, verse 34, the Bible says, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water, his side. So we have seven places. We have his head when they put that on. We have his back when he was lashed with that scourge. We had his two hands making it five, four. We have his two legs, and we also have his side. Glory to Jesus. And that was for us. He went through that for us. That blood was for our victory. That blood was a game changer. That blood was what took the devil's honor. Where the devil did not understand. The Bible says that if the princes of this world had known, they would have treaded that path. They did not know that it was in the suffering <laughs> that we receive our emancipation. Glory to Jesus. So we'll be looking at the significance of the blood. What the blood of Jesus Christ brings redemption. Glory to Jesus. Redemption is an act of being bought back or rescued from bondage or captivity. Redemption specifically is being delivered from captivity, being delivered from sin and is consequences through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ we were bought back you know how we were sold into sin the sin of Adam and Eve brought the entire human race into bondage but the blood of Jesus was a token it was a token to purchase us to buy us back that is what redemption is in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, the Bible says, In him in whom we have redemption through his blood. Redemption through his blood. So his blood was for our redemption, was for our buying back. In, in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19, he said, For you know that ye we are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. As precious as they are, you will not compare them to the blood. They are corrupt when you want to put, when you put them side by side with the blood of Jesus. He said, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ. Precious blood of Christ. As a lamb without blemish and without spot. First Peter 1 18 and 19. So the precious blood of Jesus Christ redeemed us. 
And then we have also mentioned that it brings forgiveness. We see that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. He said, in whom we have redemption and through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. So the blood also brings forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness involves pardoning someone for their wrongdoing offense. Glory to Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is granted by God to those who repent of their sins and ask for his mercy. Through the blood of Jesus, believers receive forgiveness for their sin and are reconciled to God. Now, you will not understand, you know, many things we take for granted. You will not understand what it, what it means to be forgiven. The Bible says, blessed is the man whose iniquity is forgiven. One of our meetings I shared with us, a, a, a known psychiatrist said that if 50% of his patients are able to, under, to, to, to receive forgiveness, that they will be well. A lot of people are in bondage because of the guilt, because of the accusation of Satan. So it, it takes the blood of Jesus to bring forgiveness. And it's something that you should celebrate. It is something that we should appreciate to be forgiven by God. To be forgiven by God is also to bring peace and reconciliation. We see, we see, we see, we see a Colossians 1, 19 and 20. He said, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. So the, the blood of Jesus Christ gives forgiveness and gives peace. And it reconciles us to God. He said, for Romans chapter 5, verse 10. He said, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So Jesus forgave us, reconciled us with God. And gave us peace. Glory to Jesus. Another thing the blood of Jesus does is atonement. Atonement signifies reconciliation between God and humanity. And it's achieved through the sacrificial death of Jesus. His blood shed on the cross serves as an atoning sacrifice that appeases God's justice and makes it possible for sinners to be forgiven and restored to a right relationship with God. We are here today because of the blood that was shed. So what God looks at is not you. God sees the blood of Jesus. So that is what the blood of Jesus does. The blood of Jesus brought grace, brought that atonement. Jesus is the mediator between God and man. And he achieved that through the blood of his sacrifice, the blood that was shed on the cross. Another thing the blood of Jesus does is justification. This is very interesting. Justification is a legal declaration of righteousness bestowed upon believers by God. It is, be, it is a bestowal. You don't work for it. You don't qualify for it. God bestows it upon you. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. So that is what justification is. God bestows righteousness on you. It is not based on their own merit or action, but it is a gift of grace through faith in Christ. Through justification, believers are acquitted of their sins and declared righteous in God's sight. Solely by merit of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, his death and resurrection, you are acquitted, you are discharged. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, 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 the issue is not what you have been involved in. The issue is, have you put your trust in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? There is no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wipe. There is no iniquity that the blood of Jesus can, cannot cleanse. So justification, God puts righteousness on you because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's what the blood of Jesus does. In Romans 5, 9, it says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 
So the blood of Jesus justifies us. It's a legal tender. So when the devil is trying to hold on to say, oh, your ancestors, you know, that's one of the things that most of these people who do deliverance, if you don't have a balanced knowledge, you will derail as a deliverance minister. We are justified by the blood of Jesus. There is no need to begin to tell people to go and do assignments. There is no need to go and tell people to go and, to go and appease any deity, to go and, uh, go and do this. No, you don't need to do that. You don't need to begin to look for sand. Go and look for where you bury your umbilical cord. Go and do this. Some people say sacrifice on seven altars. You don't need to do that. The blood of Jesus has justified us. We are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when the devil comes your way and says, ah, I'm not going to leave you, they tell you that all this, they talk about family cloud, talk about ancestral spirit. But if you are in Christ, they don't have anything over you. Whatever you have been involved, whether it was done on your behalf or it was done by you, when you have come into Christ, he forgives you and justifies you. He imputes righteousness on you. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, For Christ also had once suffered for sin, that the just for the unjust, that he may bring us to God. So Jesus took our place. He took our place. The blood of Jesus brings cleansing from sin and dead works. And it also brings sanctification. We see that in 1 John 1, 7. Say, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Emphasis on all. There is no sin the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Hebrews 9, 14. He says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through his eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So when accusation, you allow the devil to accuse and the devil tells you you are not worthy. And some people accept that lie is because you don't know the power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus purges, it cleanses. In Hebrews chapter 13, again, verse 12, he said, Wherefore Jesus also, Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gates. So, Jesus had your sanctification in mind when he was killed at the cross, on the cross of Calvary. Another interesting thing we need to know about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus established the new covenant, established and ratified the new covenant. In Luke chapter 20, verse 20, 22, verse 20, he said, Likewise, also the cup after supper, Jesus, it was Jesus saying, He said, This is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. The blood of Jesus ushers us into the new covenant. We have a new covenant with God, a new relationship with God. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 20, 25 he said after the same manner he also took the cup when he had sobbed saying this cup is the new testament in my blood the new testament in my blood that is what the blood of jesus did brought about the new testament then hebrew chapter 9 15 to 17 he said and for this cause he is the mediator of the new covenant and by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. The first testament brought all of us into slavery. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That is the blessing of the new covenant. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So the death of Jesus was a seal. It enacted the new covenant and also ratified it, sealed the new covenant. And what is the new covenant? Access to God, 
eternal life. We are now be, we are now children of God. We have been brought into the commonwealth of Israel by that blood of Jesus Christ. It's the past. Glory to Jesus. Now, another important thing you need to know about the blood of Jesus, he granted access, granted us access, access to God. This one is so interesting. We don't need, you see, you don't need somebody to stand between you and God. You have direct access to God. You find that it was not so in the Old Testament. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. I told you that when the blood dropped on the mount on, on, on Calvary, according to Max. Matthew's account. He said the curtain that divided the holies from holies. We know that the way the temple was designed, the holies was separated with a curtain. And the high priest could only enter once in a year. The only person that had access to God was a high priest. And he does that only once in a year. And how do, does he do it? He would, they would tie a chain and a bell attached to it on his waist. So that to know whether he's alive. So as he's walking, the bell will be dangling and ringing. If you don't hear the bell ringing, it means that something has happened to him. Maybe he has been struck dead. Do we now pull the rope? That is how sacred. No, the access was so limited. It was only the high priest and once in a year. But when Jesus died, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom. Giving us access. We now have access. That is what... What um, um, uh, Paul said when he was talking, what, uh, when he said, come up and obtain grace. Come up boldly to the truth of grace. We now have access. We now have access to the presence of God. We don't need a Moses to stand in between us and God. We don't need a priest to stand between us and God. We have direct access. That is what the blood has done for us. In Matthew 27, verse 51, the Bible says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rock rent. So that cutting, that demarcation, that is separating us from the glory of God, from the holies of holies, it was rent, it was ripped. And we had access. So you can now carry the glory of God. You can now carry the anointing of God. It is no more reserved. It is accessible to every child of God. Glory to Jesus. That is what the blood of Jesus has done. The blood of Jesus gives us access. Another interesting thing the blood of Jesus has done for us. The blood of Jesus has given us victory over Satan, sin, and death. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. He said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Child of God, there is power in the blood to overcome the devil they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. The power through the blood of Jesus. I want you to say the blood of Jesus. Just plead the blood of Jesus. Peter tells us that it is the precious blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus over your spirit. The blood of Jesus over my soul. The blood of Jesus over my body. The blood of Jesus over my family. The blood of Jesus. 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 When the devil brings those thoughts to accuse you, to tell you that you're not good enough, you plead the blood of Jesus. When fear tries to penetrate your heart, you plead the blood of Jesus. When evil thoughts try to come to you, you plead the blood of Jesus. If you find yourself in a difficult situation, you plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So we have access. Glory to Jesus. Then look at this interesting one. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. He said, having spoiled principalities and power, he made an open show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He spoiled them. The blood of Jesus is a spoiler. It spoils witchcraft. 
it spoils demonic manipulation. It spoils the power of darkness. So you need to understand this. So when you're releasing the blood of Jesus, you're releasing an arsenal. When you are releasing the blood of Jesus, you are spoiling. the works on caution even when they do their invocation just plead the blood of jesus and it scatters it it spoils it the bible says he spoiled principalities and powers tonight every conspiracy of the wicked in your life every scheme of satan in your health in your finance in your spiritual life in every aspect of your life we spoil it with the blood of jesus we spoil them with the blood of jesus we spoil them with the blood of jesus we spoil them with the blood of jesus, the the of jesus. every vocation every satanic projection, every witchcraft manipulation, we spoil them with the blood of Jesus. Everything they put up together against you, against your destiny, against your career, against your finances, we spoil them with the blood of Jesus. Against your ministry, we spoil them with the blood of Jesus. They will not stand. The blood of Jesus spoils them. They are destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15. He said, For as much, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through the fear of death we are all their lifetime subject to bondage. So the blood of Jesus brings deliverance. The blood of Jesus brings deliverance. Adam Yoradi Zevakatas, Imoshi, Sepharas, Ilatosate Zigaroban. That demonic manipulation that, that, that manifests in your dreams, you have these pictures of, 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 of satanic attack, and you think you're possessed, child of God. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we destroy that scheme, we spoil that scheme. The blood of Jesus Christ, we, we pull you out from that dark well. We bring you out from that satanic hole. The chains are broken by the blood of Jesus. Daughter of Zion, you are delivered. That demonic siege is destroyed. Nothing stops you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Another important thing the blood of Jesus does. In, in, in John chapter 6 verse 54. John 6, 54, he said, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. What does it mean to eat? It's not a literal thing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's figurative. It means when you internalize, like this truth we are sharing, you internalize, you believe, in the blood of Jesus, you believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. You believe in the saving power in Jesus and his blood. You believe the teaching of Jesus. You internalize, you receive eternal life. Eternal life does not start in heaven. Eternal life starts here. You live the God life, the Zoe life. The life that does not have any limitation. The blood of Jesus gives us that eternal life. He said, whosoever drinks, if you imbibe in it, imbibe the blood, if you internalize the blood of Jesus Christ, you receive eternal life. For us who have eternal life, death is only a sleep. That's why we say good night to believers, because we know we shall see at the resurrection morning. The Bible says, and I will raise him up at the last days. If you have lost a loved one who is a child of God, you have really not lost that loved one. You are going to meet that loved one again on the resurrection day because God has promised that those who drink his blood shall be raised up on the last day. We shall see again. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Another important thing the blood of Jesus does is healing, 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 healing. This is faith clinic. And when you talk about clinic, you talk about healing. So you cannot talk about, our faith clinic cannot be effective if we don't apply the blood of Jesus. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 
He said, who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye we are healed. I, I, I told you about this, this scourge on Jesus, the one they use on Jesus. They call it that whip, they call it scorpion. As he was, as they whipped him, his flesh was sliced. So by that stripes, those wounds, the Bible says that is where your healing is. That is where your healing is. Because of the stripe of Jesus, you are healed. Tonight, are you trusting God for healing? There is a blood that has been shed for your healing. I pray that you receive your healing by his stripes that you be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have healing in the blood. Another thing the blood of Jesus does, breaking of causes, breaking of causes. We see in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is written. Cause is everyone that is being hung on the tree. Because of that position he took, because of the blood that he shed, the curses have been broken. No curse over you can stand. It is of no effect. Whether it is, well, there is no need to, for you to be afraid. You plead the blood of Jesus. If anybody is I'm cursing you, there are some there are some children who parents, you know, because they know they have power over their children. Say, I curse you. Listen to me. I don't know what you have done, and I don't know who has placed a curse on you. But if you have truly repented, that curse is broken by the blood of Jesus. That curse is broken by the blood of Jesus. We have hope. We have hope. There are some of you who have done terrible things that have attracted cause. There are some of you who have done abominable things that have attracted cause. If you have truly repented and you put your faith in Jesus, the blood of Jesus redeems you from that cause. Because Jesus, Jesus became a curse that you may be redeemed from the cause of the law. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Anything that you have done, anything that should attract, attract, attract a curse. I plead the blood of Jesus. And I pray that by the blood of Jesus, that curse be broken. Even as you have repented, I pray that that siege over your life be broken. That you be set free. That you be set free. That you be set free. Curse from demonic agents. I command them to be broken. I command them to be broken. That it be of no effect in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Now, how to apply the power in the blood of Jesus. That's what we're going to look before we go into prayers. Indeed, applying the power of the blood of Jesus involves a deliberate and intentional approach. And here are some effective ways we can do that. Number one, faith and belief. I share the testimony of that grandma who pleaded the blood. She doesn't understand English. She only came to church and heard when they are pleading the blood of Jesus. She went home and her child was dying. So she started pleading the blood of Jesus. That was how the yoke of death over her child was broken. Why? She had faith and belief. You don't say it casually. You don't say it without believing. When you plead the blood of Jesus, do that with faith. Embrace and believe in the efficacy and the potency in the blood of Jesus Christ. As we see in scripture, trust in his power to redeem, the power to cleanse, the power to protect, the power to, to break every cause, the power to heal, the power to deliver, and the power to overcome satanic forces. So when they come, you plead the blood of Jesus and you're doing that in faith. You pray in spiritual warfare, you plead the blood of Jesus. 
You have a, a, a bad dream. You, you don't wake up and become helpless. You say, I cancel this dream by the blood of Jesus because you now know the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus. So you must be intentional and you must do that by faith and you must believe in the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. The another thing you need to do, another way to apply or appropriate the blood of Jesus, you must be conscious of it. Consciousness and reality. Make it your consciousness. Make the power of the blood of Jesus a conscious reality in your life. Meditate on its importance, its significance, the impact in your salvation. Make it a consciousness. Let it fill your mind. Remember I told you, when Jesus said, whosoever shall drink my blood, it means anybody that shall internalize it. Make it a, your reality. Make it your consciousness. No, reflect on what the blood has done. Embrace it. Allow it to sink into you. Contemplate it. Meditate on it. Allow it to sink into you. That is how you make it a consciousness. Glory to Jesus Christ. Meditate on its significance and impact on your salvation. Spiritual growth and daily experience. Keep it in forefront of your thought and your action. Work with it anywhere you're going. When a thought of fear comes, you release the blood of Jesus. Make it your reality. Make it a part of your life. Glory to Jesus. And our way to appropriate the blood of Jesus, prayer and affirmation. Plead and express the blood of Jesus in your prayer, in declaration and affirmation. Speak the promise of scripture regarding the blood of Jesus over your life, circumstance, and your loved ones. Declare victory, protection, freedom, God's blessing on the blood. When I pray, I pray, Lord, I come by the blood of sprinkling. As I say that, I get, I get access. I just feel like the door is opened. I, I, I said, Lord, I come by the blood of sprinkling. A vish, a sande, a candy in a kosh. As I say it, I have this revelation of access that the blood gives. So I said, Lord, I come by the blood of sprinkling. I go, oh my God, you need to put it in your prayer. Affirm it, plead it, plead it. I overcome every scheme of Satan by the blood of sprinkling, by the blood of Jesus. I resist the devil. Use it in your prayer. And lastly, use it in spiritual warfare. Utilize the blood of Jesus as a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare. We read in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. He said they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Let it be a weapon in your hand. Remind the enemy of his defeats by the blood of Jesus. Rebuke demon forces, oppression, and attacks by standing firm in the authority granted through the blood of Jesus. And that's what deliverance is. The devil says, oh, I'm not going to leave this one. This one is serving me. We tell the devil, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The devil said, oh, this one is my own captive. This one is a legal captive. Her father sold that to me. Her mother sold that to me. She came to me for help. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Remember, the blood of Jesus brings justification. The blood of Jesus for atonement. The blood of Jesus for healing. The blood of Jesus for breaking causes. The blood of Jesus for deliverance. The blood of Jesus for protection. The Bible says, when I see the blood, I shall pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you. The blood of Jesus exempts you from, from crisis. It exempts you. It exempts you. So it's a spiritual thing. Today we know have some people who believe that <laughs> they use the communion blood and they sprinkle. That's not what the Bible is saying. You have, it's a spiritual thing. It must be in your consciousness. It must be affirmed and declared. You must believe and have faith. And you must use it in warfare. You must use it in prayer. Not going to sprinkle blood. Remember, the Bible says the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal. It's not physical. You're going to sprinkle blood. And they call it revelation. I don't know what revelation is higher than the revelation in scripture. You plead the blood of Jesus. You quote the scripture that has to do with the blood. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. That is the power of the blood. Chains are broken. 
Limitations are taking over, taking over, taking away. The siege is over. The blood of Jesus brings healing. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you this tonight, just be pleading the blood of Jesus. What is that difficult situation in your life? Plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That difficulty in your relationship. The blood of Jesus. Over that stubborn child. The blood of Jesus. Over that difficulty in your career. The blood of Jesus. Over financial difficulty. The blood of Jesus. Over sickness and diseases. The blood of Jesus. 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 By the blood, I receive access. I receive access. No more barrier. I receive access to glory. I receive access to power. I receive access to favor. Just begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Just be pleading the blood of Jesus. Pleading the blood of Jesus. What is that trend in your family? Abolish them by the blood of Jesus. They don't stand. They don't stand again by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Child of God, plead the blood of Jesus. I don't know what prayer you want me to pray for you tonight. When God has already given you that power, God has already handed over into your hands what will bring liberation in your life and your family. Just be pleading the blood of Jesus. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over that sick man, over that sick woman, over that sick boy, over that sick girl. And I declare wellness from the crown of your hair to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus and I destroy every manipulation of Satan, every projection of witches and wizards against you. I destroy them by the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Every closed door, I come with the blood of Jesus. I command you to open every chain. I come with the blood of Jesus. I command you to be destroyed. I plead the blood of Jesus. Every curse, I come with the blood of Jesus. I command you to be destroyed. Maleve Zupa, I receive my healing. I receive access. I receive peace. I receive clarity of thought. I receive divine direction by the blood of Jesus Christ. Zena Kote Baro Kadinashi. Namiko Zutaria, sing about the blood. Ike di no bara, Ike di no bara, Ike di no bara ya. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power, power, power in the blood. This night, call your family. Hold hands together. Hold hands. Pray with your children and begin to declare, stand on the blood. Stand on the blood. This nonsense in this house must stop. Every harassment, I want you to stand in the place of prayer. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Pray over your job. Pray over your career. Plead the blood of Jesus. Let every limitation be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Overcome. I overcome. The Bible said they overcame. So I overcome by the blood of Jesus. I want you to declare. I want you to affirm. I want you to believe. I want you to use it in warfare. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Bible said the blood speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I pray for you. The blood will speak for you in that interview panel. The blood will speak for you in that interview panel. The blood will speak for you in that inter interview panel. The blood will speak for you where you have dropped your application. The blood will speak for you where you have dropped your application. The blood will speak for you for in that promotion. The blood will speak for you in your finances. The blood will speak for you in your health. The blood will speak for you in your career. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining Faith Link. I know being empowered. This is not just for the moment. It is for a lifetime. 
exercise the power in the blood, use the power in the blood. You have access by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for joining. I know that you've been blessed. I want to plead with you, please share this video so that it can be available to others. This is one of the things that gives the devil heart attack. Truths like this, the devil don't want people to hear. I want to encourage you, please share it. Let it go, let it reach out to people and let people be delivered. I also want to plead with you, if you have not subscribed to our channels, please, we want you, we're appealing that you should do. Like, subscribe. You know how the platforms on social media work. The more likes, the more available your videos are, the more reach you can have. And we are on a mission on this platform to reach out to people, to bring healing and deliverance, and to bring salvation to the lost. Praise the Lord. I also want to say a happy Easter in advance. This is a season of rejoicing. It's a season of reflection and rejoicing because of what Jesus accomplished on the blood of Jesus on the on the cross for us. I want to say happy Easter in advance to every one of you, and um, we'll see you again next week. Next week wednesday and maybe by next week wednesday we'll be talking about the power of resurrection if the lord permits us we'll be talking about the power of re restoration resurrection these are key key knowledge you need to have as a child of god that will help you in your work with god god bless you thank you for joining faith clinic tonight have a wonderful night rest and i pray that your prayer life will be more effective now that god has equipped you Thank you for joining. God bless you and good night. Thank you, Jesus.